Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. I had to go to MTV.com because Amazon Prime is playing with me when it comes to my Teen Mom reviews. As I stated in, I had another channel, which is the same name as this one almost, but I lost access to it, and so I had to come back to my original channel, and I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, folks. But to be honest, it's great to be back on my original channel. Let's get right on into this review. Since I'm on MTV.com, unfortunately, I'm gonna have this little freaking triangle in the middle of my damn screenshot, so I'm really sorry, guys. Ended off the last show with Brianna saying that what Devoin says was not absolutely true. She continues saying that here, and then she says it's frustrating. One of the lies that Brianna doesn't agree with is him saying that Brianna is upset with him because he's friends with Kaylin. Brianna says that's a lie because Devoin came to her party. Brianna said that she was tired of every season fighting with Devoin. She said that her and Devoin were fine. And yes, the correct pronunciation of his name is Devoin. He says so himself. I forgot which episode, but he said that Brianna is mispronouncing his name and out of respect for his name, I'm going to be pronouncing his name correctly on my channel. We did family reunion together. We were fine. We took Nova out to E. We were fine. I don't honestly know what happened. Brianna says that there was no fight. He just stopped talking to her. It went radio silent and it's been that way ever since. Brianna says that she hasn't done anything to him. So she really thinks he has a lot of nerve being disrespectful to her to the point that he doesn't even want to speak to her. Brianna says that she was the first person that Devoin came to to talk to her about his gambling situation. He said that he told her before he told his girlfriend or anybody else. And she said to him, look, you need to get help. I'm here for you. So Dr. Drew asks Brianna, has he done anything? And as far as trying to get help for his gambling. And Brianna says that she sent him links to therapy and he didn't even bother to open the links. So Brianna says that she was even willing to transfer her therapy sessions that are already paid for to Devoin and he wasn't even willing to do that. So Brianna says, and he's complaining about the fact that he has to go back and forth for pickups. But Brianna says she told Devoin she's willing to meet him halfway. And she says, Devoin says that they don't have a set schedule and they do. Brianna says he cannot keep pointing the finger at her, making it appear as though he's keeping Nova away from him. She said the schedule is he can get Nova every other Saturday. And then she goes on to tell Dr. Drew and Nessa girl that Devoin has a new apartment and has a room in that apartment. Is that room Nova's room? No, it's not. It's a gaming room for his gaming stuff. And she says that he smokes weed in there. Brianna says that it's more stuff in there than just Nova's bed. And Nova comes to her telling her, I don't want to go there. And Brianna says that when she tells Devoin this, that he thinks she's lying. Brianna then states that she wanted to meet up with Devoin so that they can talk and he never showed up. So for him to say that I didn't want to talk all season, he's a liar. So him. Dr. Drew says to Brianna that this is all a part of the addiction, the lying, and the other words they were using that I've never seen before. <laughs> Dr. Drew says that at least one of the positive things is that he came out letting us try to understand some of the condition of his addiction. And Dr. Drew goes on to say, and also understanding what he needs to get better now, whether Devoin does it or not, that's a whole nother issue. Dr. Drew says to Brianna that he didn't know that she was offering her therapy sessions to Devoin. And for free, Dr. Drew says that Devoin was saying that he couldn't afford therapy. So now Dr. Drew says that he says moving on. At times, Brianna has felt overwhelmed raising her two daughters with little co-parenting help. And Dr. Drew says this season, Brianna learned that her depression was due to having bipolar disorder. He then says that Brianna moved out of her mom's house. She navigated a long distance relationship. So now, of course, they're gonna play clips from Brianna's season, moving on. So after showing Brianna's clips of the season, Dr. Drew asks her, what are you most proud of this season? Which I thought was a great question. And Brianna says, she's most proud of moving out. <laughs> and Dr. Drew says, how far are you away? And Brianna says, about five or 10 minutes away. Brianna says the girls were a little, you know, feeling a type of way because they had something that they were used to as far as living with their grandmother and their auntie. 
but you know they got used to it and they're not that far away so now they're good so dr drew says to brianna you've had depression for quite a while help people understand what that feels like brianna says it feels like you just don't want to do anything and then brianna says then she has a manic episode where she wants to get everything done and then she crashes so dr drew says there's lots of good news in this right dr drew says that it's very manageable with medication. It's highly heritable, so it's in the family. Dr. Drew says that the condition is very treatable with medication. He says it again. And Brianna says, you know, I really want to try something else because the medication left me completely monotone. Emotion to anything. Well, Dr. Drew says, you know, you're entitled to want to feel good. And Nessa asks Brianna, when did you notice you know, like, when did you notice the symptoms? And Brianna says that she doesn't want to cry. But when she noticed that, you know, something was wrong when she didn't want to do anything with her kids, that's when Brianna says she needed to go get help. So Vanessa asks Brianna, do you think you're getting off your medication has anything to do with your breakup with Bobby? Vanessa, where, where did we get that from? Because I didn't hear Brianna say that she got off of her medication. And I don't know how you get the correlation of her wanting to switch up her medication to the breakup, you're really reaching with that one. And Brianna's answer to that was that she doesn't know. Vanessa asked Brianna, who ended the relationship? Obviously guys, I understand they're going to re-ask questions for the audience that didn't see the show. Why would you have gone the entire franchise and not watch the entire show and, and not watch every single episode in the season? So Brianna says that she told Bobby that she wanted space and then she didn't hear from him for two weeks. Brianna says to her, if she's expressing to her partner that she's not doing okay mentally, she says that she would want her partner by her side. And then Brianna says, and I didn't get that. And then Dr. Drew, please hold this woman accountable, please. Please, in your next statement, because by the way, guys, this is the first time I'm watching this completely with you guys. Dr. Drew says, but it's a bit of a setup though. Don't you think? He didn't say, don't you think? But I did. Dr. Drew says that you told him I want you to go away and then he goes away and then you get mad at him. Brianna says that I didn't necessarily tell him go away. I just needed a mental break. And Brianna says to this day, we still have not really sat down in full detail and discussed what happened. Brianna says that if the roles were reversed and he told her that he was depressed and he needed space or whatever, that she would be like, I'm here. But isn't that what Bobby said he said to you? He said he texted you back and he said, I'm here. So what more do you want? I feel like I'm, I feel like that was in a movie. You guys, if you remember what movie that's from, let me know. What more do you want? It's in, it's in a movie. I don't know which one. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So Brianna, girl, you are a tad confused. And I really hope that you look at this season and I hope that you especially watch that episode where you're realizing in yourself that you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. So Rihanna says the fact that he didn't like, I guess, text her or try to be near her when she said she needed space wasn't quote, ick, that she was hurt at first, but now she's just like, she's gone this long. She says, I've gone this long, not talking to you. What's another few months? So now for some reason, we're talking about Brianna's lawsuit party and, and he asks why did she invite Janelle and Brianna says that the party information well the fact that she was having a party was leaked on the internet and Janelle contacted her and was like oh I want to go so bad or whatever and Brianna was like you know what you can come and then she came and there was no drama thankfully I mean I didn't see any drama like at this point if Janelle wasn't still married to David I wouldn't mind her being back on the show but that man is toxic and I swear to God I do not want to do another review with that man in my review so Dr. Drew asks has that friendship been going on a long time and Brianna says yeah she loves Janelle Brianna says that Janelle was the only person that was nice to her when she first joined Teen Mom 2 so now Dr. Drew goes back to the drama and he says to Brianna, so at the top of the show, you didn't want to sit out here with the other girls. What happened? Brianna says that she doesn't necessarily feel that she's ready to have a sit down with Ashley. She told Dr. Drew a few years ago you were there. There was a lot going on between yes. me and Kale. Yes. I couldn't control my feelings. Yeah. 
and I lashed out really bad and that's something that I regret. So Brianna says before Ashley even came out, she started feeling that tension, that anger that she felt um, in the Kale situation at the reunion. She says she knows what she did last time and she didn't want to repeat that. So she thought it was best to remove herself out of that environment. So Nessa says, when did that situation happen? Uh, with you and Ashley and Brianna says it happened at family reunion and what in her opinion what she thinks happened was that because Ashley's friends with Kalen Ashley doesn't know how to mind her business so she says that everything that's going on between her and Kale she feels like she can butt in and Dr. Drew says on social media and Brianna says yes on social media Brianna says now after what happened now it's become personal I can't F with you and I don't want you around me. So Dr. Drew says to us, the audience, to get the full story, we will have to watch Teen Mom Family Reunion season two, which will be coming out January 3rd. And if you're asking, yes, of course, I will be reviewing it. So we are now here with Leah. And of course, they showed her clips. And Nessa said, how do you feel watching that? And Leah said, well, it's very hard to relive it and then see it publicly. Dr. Drew says, I have giant question marks over my head. Dr. Drew says, watching your emotions when he asked you to marry him took my breath away and now it's no more. Leah says, well, a breakup is sad. She says it's sad and it hurts. Leah says she's not going to be a victim of her circumstances. She's going to move forward and she's going to get through it. So Leah then says that her and Jalen are in a good place and sometimes love means letting go. Uh, why are y'all in a good place if he cheated? I'm just, I'm just saying. Leah, I don't understand why you're trying to protect Jalen. So Dr. Drew says there's a lot of reasons why this may happen. One of the reasons is cheating. He says, Leah, you know, basically, are you, are you going to admit to anything that, that he did anything? And Leah says, I don't think that's for me to say, basically. She says, that's for Jalen to speak on. But obviously, Jalen's not here. So Leah, why are you protecting him? I find that so strange. So apparently, and make sure you take this with a grain of salt and do your own research, Jalen had Leah sign an NDA that she would, a non-disclosure agreement, that she would not discuss the reasons behind their breaking up. That's why she's very limited on what she says. Now, sister is saying that this is true, and now she's not allowed to talk about it. No one's sure why Leah agreed to sign the document, but it's possible Jalen threatened to make things very uncomfortable for her. How? Because Leah would have more pull than Jalen. But then again, Jalen is also with the federal government, right? Isn't he with the army or something like that? With the military? Anyway, the truth's going to come out, Jalen, okay? So you can hide your little deeds. Let me tell you something. You want to do deeds in secret, you should, you should be okay with them getting out. Don't do stuff that you're ashamed of. That's all to it. If you didn't do anything that you were ashamed of doing, you wouldn't be sitting here having Leah sign agreements. And Leah, why? I said Leah. And Leah, why are you signing agreements with him after he cheated? And then Dr. Drew says, and all, another thing, something is revealed about Jalen, that he's not who he said he was. And again, Leah says, I think there's something for Jalen to speak on, not me protecting him. You know what? Here I was thinking that Leah's segment was going to give us a lot of tea. And all she's giving me is lumpy oatmeal. Girl, I'm over it. And then Nessa says, I have a question. Did you cheat? Nessa, girl, you're just trying to fill up the time in the segment. Uh, Leah's not there. She's she's not a cheater now. I say now, because as far as I remember, she cheated on Robbie. But that was a long time ago when she was young. All right. So Dr. Drew says, whatever it was, did you have anything like, did you try to prevent it? And Leah was like, no. So Leah says she definitely had questions. She was confused. Then Leah says, have we been living a lie the year and a half? So Dr. Drew says to Leah, is this something we should have empathy towards him for? And Leah says, yes, I think so. I think it's society. Society tells you to be a cheater. Girl, I'm not going to tell you to go to hell, but I want to. But anyway. So Dr. Drew asks, did Jalen ask you to sign anything? And Leah admits that what I just told you guys was 100% true. She was asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And that is the reason why she can't talk about the situation. Because Jalen is ashamed. He's a piece of crap. And he wanted to have his stuff covered. But guess what? Like I said earlier, you can't hide from yourself everywhere you go. There you are. And he said it. And I've sang it so many times. It's so, 
<laughs> in so many reviews but it is true and it still holds true 20 to 30 years later you can't hide from yourself because everywhere you go there you are and all of your little dirty lies are gonna come out jailing okay there's another part to that story that i showed you guys on the web outside of this show that i didn't talk about but leah's talking about it here and she's basically saying in a property settlement she agreed not to discuss why they broke up and in the property settlement guys because i read it just now um you guys can go look it up on i guess the sun i think it was the sun he gave her the house for her to keep her mouth quiet and so maybe that's a good deal i don't know anyway so dr drew says so you can't share with us legally you can't share and leah said yes i cannot nessa asks do the girls know about what happened and leah says yes dr drew asks do they know the details do they wish that you two would get back together leah said yes but they want him to come around just as him so whatever it was he was portraying was someone else okay so y'all y'all telling on yourselves y'all always telling yourselves on this show because all i gotta do is read the context cues that y'all are not saying and i can tell the truth okay so basically he cheated and he perpetrated a fraud you know being someone that he wasn't i don't know in what aspect but i will do my research and um, i'll probably be back with you guys this weekend with a teen mom talk so a lot of this has to do with the legal situation i'm sure maybe if leah wasn't under duress by this damn document maybe she would have more to say but she's trying to keep it cute and copacetic and as i said i'm over it so i'm ready to move on child unless they ask her some more questions about something else and nessa asks leah would you like to be able to one day be able to talk about this journey and leah says yes so now we're here with Kate and Tyler, and as she asks everyone, Nessa says, how you feel about looking at those clips? And Caitlin and Tyler, well, Tyler is like, you know, no matter how many times we've done this show, it's still, you know what I'm saying? It never gets easy. So Nessa asks, how are the girls? And the girls are doing very well. Nessa girl, Nessa asks if they have any plans on expanding the family. We already know that Tyler had a vasectomy, so why is this even a question? But they say, no, sometimes they get little thoughts but then they snap back to reality. And I'm not gonna get into full detail, but Nessa does ask how the procedure was, the vasectomy, and Caitlin says she actually watched the entire thing. And um, yeah, that's all the detail I'm gonna be giving you on this review. So Dr. Drew asks about Carly, and I'm sorry, this, this screen grab looks terrible. Oh. Okay, that's better. So Dr. Drew asks about Carly, and Caitlin says, well, I have been reaching out, but it does take them a long time to respond back. And that's honestly because, guys, they really want to cut y'all off completely. But they're, I feel like they're just, you know, they're just trying to spare Caitlin and Tyler's feelings. And y'all already know, please do not clown me. I always forget the man's name. I never forget Teresa's name, but I always forget her husband's name. And I'm really sorry, Brandon. Brandon, I have to remember that. Dr. Drew asks, Caitlin, do you know why that is? Why they're slow to respond? Caitlin says she really doesn't know, but she does know that she was in the line, I guess, waiting to pick the kids up from, from waiting to pick her up from school. And she literally called um, Teresa and was saying, hey, you know, Noah's having a really tough time and they ended up FaceTiming. So Vanessa says to Tyler that, you know, you went into the fact that you were sexually abused as a child. And now she's... Um, so I attempted to look up what ketamine is, and it's basically a drug, a very powerful drug, and it's used for recreational purposes, so I'm assuming that this is helping him get through this process of healing. And Dr. Drew says it is going to help him get to the parts of the brain that he can't get to on his own. So then Dr. Drew says, where's April? I don't see her here. And Caitlin says, oh, her father-in-law had to have surgery, so she had to be there because she's not going to be in the surgical room with him. Anyway. Um, Dr. Drew, you're very messy when you say, so she's not on a drinking binge out there somewhere. Uh, Caitlin said no. And Caitlin, you really don't know because you're on stage right now. She very well could be, but we'll just believe what you're saying. So Tyler says that April wasn't really happy that some of the things that was covered, she wasn't too happy about that. So Caitlin, why are you lying? Your man just told on you. I mean, look at how Caitlyn is looking at Tyler. She's looking at him like, please don't say too much on this stage. Caitlyn says, yes, she got mad at me for talking on camera about her being worried about her drinking. You're doing something that you need to be ashamed of. Here's, here's a bright idea. Maybe you shouldn't be doing it. 
so Caitlin says we were cool after that or whatever. Um, she just didn't want Caitlin. Well, she thought Caitlin was thinking she was drinking every day. Well, girl, April, you're an addict. You shouldn't be drinking at all. Not, oh, I'm not drinking every day. Alcohol shouldn't even be in the house around you, in my opinion. Dr. Drew was saying that, but you know, you don't want to parent your parent. And Caitlin's like, no. Dr. Drew says that Kate has this thing when she was little, she was basically made to be the parent because, you know, she grew up around addicts. So he says, you know, you also become responsible for the parents' feelings. Now we're here with Ashley and she looks beautiful. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to give her a chance. Okay. I'm not going, I'm not here to put down another sister. Okay. But if you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't care what color you are. But anyway, uh, Dr. Drew tells us that, you know, Barr w went into rehab for substance abuse and now he faces some serial, well, it is serial jail time, but anyway, that's not what I was going to say. But now Barr faces some serious jail time. Ashley girl, do you even see what we see when we look at you? You're such a beautiful girl. Why is you with Barr's raggedy ass? I'm really sorry. He is a, he is a mess. He is really a mess. And I swear I've said this before in a Young and Pregnant episode somewhere. Or I said this on a Teen Mom too. But girl, if he gets locked up for five years, I doubt that you're going to be sitting around waiting for him. I just know you're not. Nessa, after watching Ashley's clips for the season, Nessa asks Ashley, did watching that make you emotional? Ashley said, not really. I'm just happy to be in a better place. So Nessa asks, do you speak to any of the other moms? And Ashley says, nope, I don't speak to anyone. Well, MTV, so much for you wanting all the girls to be best friends and all. So Nessa says, for the glamping trip, you said you were going to go and then you changed your mind. And you were saying that the girls didn't like you. And Ashley said that they was for Jade and Brianna. And Nessa says, they sent you a bracelet. She asks, have you worn it? And Ashley says, no. And Ashley says she thinks things were interesting because she got a text from Leah letting her know that she was the topic of conversation on that glamping trip. And so was her husband. Ashley said when she brought it up, all the girls said that Leah was lying. So she doesn't know who to believe. So then she says, I hear that you all are talking about me. And then I get a bracelet in the mail that says sisters for life. Well, girl, um, Ashley, you don't have to worry because that, that bracelet was from MTV. It wasn't from the girls. I promise you MTV brought that, bought that bracelet for you. So you're free to wear it. It didn't come from them. Trust me. Ashley says that confuses me. All right. So Dr. Drew asks Ashley, what made Barr want to go and get chemical dependency treatment? And give me some props for saying that without bumbling over my words. Thank you. And <laughs> Ashley says in the black community, it's looked down like it's looked down upon, you know, that type of stuff is really looked down upon. I can tell you all myself, like therapy is looked down upon, rehab looked down upon, says that, you know, people think, oh, you're real effed up if you're going to get help. So Ashley says that Barr realized that there are just some things as humans that we just do not have the tools to do on our own. So Dr. Drew says he did go once and he left after three days. Were you surprised when he wanted to go back? And Ashley said no. But Ashley goes on to tell us that her father is an addict and he's still not clean. Has been since she was a child. So she's very familiar with the push and pull of rehab. So Dr. Drew asks Ashley about the last arrest that we already covered in the last review. So I'm not going to repeat too much of what was said. Basically, he they went to retrieve the stuff from the car. She won't say what stuff still. And they found out he had a warrant, found out he was in another state. So that warrant that he got when he was in Vegas was escalated to a different type of warrant is what she's saying. And the reason why he ended up getting arrested was failure to appear for the gun case. She says a gun case. So is it more than one, Ashley? I'm sorry. I'd be, I'd be speculating, but I really, because I pay attention to what these people are saying. So now they bring Barr out and ask him the same damn questions they asked Ashley. And the question Dr. Drew asked them was, how's he doing? And sitting on top of the world. That's what he acted like. That's what he said. He was like, <laughs> Barr said that basically he was sitting on top of the world. He was, you know, he couldn't be better. Even with all this stuff looming over your head, Barr, I wouldn't be better. In fact, I would have a tough time sleeping at night if I were you. So Dr. Drew asks Barr, what did the treatment center tell you to do in order for you to stay sober? Barr said they told him to just stick to the program. And Dr. Drew said, well, are you? And Barr was honest and said, you know what? I would be lying if I said that I 100% stuck to the program. 
So Dr. Drew asks Bar's perspective on the car accident that happened. And Bar says that he saw someone coming, cutting left across the intersection. Bar says he came up and slammed on his brakes, so he thought it was fine to keep going. It is really hard doing reviews sometimes, the way people talk. And the way Bar talks sometimes really throws me. I don't understand what he means when he says, and then the other driver cut out of nowhere. What does that mean, he cut out of nowhere? He cut you, he cut across you, he cut in between traffic. I don't understand what he means there. But he says they both slammed into each other. So he said the other driver's car ended up on the curb. It was really bad. Dr. Drew asks, Dr. Drew asks if he's okay and Barr says he's fine. Barr says that Ashley got banged up pretty bad and so did Holly. So Nessa asks, how are, are things going with your mom? And Barr says he contacted her with when he was in jail because she's used to this type of life, unfortunately. Her entire life, she's been used to the jail thing. Barr said that he asked, Barr says that he asked his mom not to say anything about his case whatsoever online. So as soon as Shin got off the phone after Barr said, can you please not say anything online about my case? Shin hung up and got right online and did what he asked her not to do about the situation. And he talked to one of his siblings about it. And he said the stuff that he said got back to his mom. Barr says that him and his mom, they don't F with each other no more. They don't talk to each other. You know, even, you know, life is short. She literally has cancer. She's still focused on this petty stuff like, oh, I heard you talking about me, blah, blah, blah. Nessa says, do you plan on continuing the relationship with you and your little sister? He says, she's my life. Of course, of course, I'm going to keep the relationship going with her. But he says he can't right now, probably because Shen's not allowing it. Nessa says to Ashley, I know you're focused on your career. What does the future hold? Ashley basically says school in the very near and far future. So as she's speaking, Barr's reaching for tissue and he's over here crying and I feel really bad. And this is why it's really hard for me to harshly judge people because at the end of the day, we're all human. We all make mistakes. A lot of us have committed crimes, okay? We just haven't gotten caught. Let's be real here. So I try my best even on this channel to be merciful. I try not to be harsh. And all I want to know is why didn't they bring up what Brianna said? Like, why didn't they bring up any of the Brianna stuff with Ashley? That's all I want to know. I'm just curious. But that pretty much ended the scene. And now we're going to move on to Amber. Okay, so now we're here with Amber. And Nessa says that Amber has made great strides. I'm going to reserve my, I'm going to reserve my judgment there. To have a closer relationship with Leah. And she says, unfortunately, due to a custody battle, she now lives thousands of miles away from her son, James. All right. So Dr. Drew asks, like he asked everybody, what are your thoughts after watching your clips? Because you know how they do. And Amber says, um, I'm just ready not to be here. Amber, you could have stayed home if you want to act like this on stage. All right. If y'all don't want to talk on the reunion, sign off so that you don't have to come back on the show. Because Amber, don't make me go in on you. I said I reserve judgment, but that was just for that segment. I, I am doing a review channel here. But if y'all don't want to be on the show, please, I can't deal with this Kaylin behavior. Y'all don't want to be on the show. Y'all don't want to talk about what happened. Y'all just not here for it. If you're not here for it, sign your name on a dotted line so that we never have to see you again so that I can stop reviewing you on my recaps because you actually would be doing me a favor because I've been doing this for years. And frankly, Amber, I'm a tad tired at this point of you. Dr. Drew said, you're ready to not be here? Amber says, yes. Dr. Drew says, what do you mean? Amber says, she doesn't want to deal with that right now. And Dr. Drew said, the James thing? And Amber says, all of that. So Amber, please pick your ass up, walk off the stage so I can end this review right now. Because I've literally had literally over 30 minutes of footage and it would be a pleasure to stop right here in, the, in this uh, review and just be on my merry little way. So then Amber says all of it was horrible. So Amber, you're now in charge of how the reunion is run? You know what? So Amber says, basically when you're re-watching it, things that you've already dealt with, you're going through those emotions again and it's very hard. Dr. Drew says, yes, most people get to live their life and, and just put things in the past and you guys have to keep reliving it. And Dr. Drew says, and here we are having to bring it up every couple of months. And Amber says, yeah, sure the F do. And uh, Dr. Drew says, you would think that you'd be used to it after all this time. Amber says, why would she ever get used to real raw emotions? That's life. So now Dr. Drew asks, how are things with Leah? She says that things are almost pretty much back to normal. So Dr. Drew says that Leah did say that you treat James differently. And Amber says, 
and me being sober and being in a different place in my life basically amber says she has a real loving relationship with james that she didn't have with leah because at the time that she had leah she wasn't sober and she says leah brought it up because that's how she felt and she goes on to say that she had guilt about it but there's nothing she can do to change what it is she had to let go of that guilt is what amber says and dr drew says the guilt of not being around your daughter and amber says first of all i was around my daughter amber i hate i hate to tell you this i mean we've been watching you on television for a very long time a lot of the time you were not there for leah and amber says she doesn't know where that came from and dr drew says i've got to be honest with you okay so the buck the buck the buckness like getting buck and drama is about to come from amber right now because she's like first of all <laughs> why are you so defensive because you know what he's saying is true so dr drew says to be a little uh, to be honest with you you're being a little unclear so please just just help me out here amber says no i'm being clear and dr drew says okay i was not recording so i had no idea guys i went all the way back on my channel all the way to see what was the first um review that i ever did on this channel and it was actually teen mom og it was season six i did not know anything about a substance abuse problem with amber i had not heard that Amber goes on to say that it's not fair to use your mental illness against you in a case. And that's exactly what she said they did in the paperwork. So I guess the judge was a woman. And Amber says that she just wanted to go based off the past. Like, um, Amber, what do you think court cases are? I mean, when a criminal commits a crime, right? Um, let me not call him a criminal. When a defendant commits a crime, let's say that they're guilty. When they commit a crime, there's proof of the crime. Um, what do you want the judge in the court to go by? Um, you have to talk about what happened right in the past. You can't talk about what's going on currently I know that you're all in your feelings and stuff, but that's kind of how court works Amber says she thinks that it's disgusting and degrading to all the women who have fought like her for their children to have their past used against them Amber says it's a shock. There's nothing to back up any of the claims whatsoever, ma'am 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 ma'am. There's actually documentation. There's video there's video to document the domestic abuse. There's the proof that you lost custody of your daughter. Please just don't let me run down the list because I'll be here all night. We ain't got time. So then Amber's like, I didn't think that's how it worked in court. And then Dr. Drew said, well, it's family court. That's how it works in court. And Amber says, I don't give a F what the F it is. Obviously, you do give an F. I mean, this whole segment is about you giving an F. Um, Amber, I'm sorry, guys. I try to keep it clean on this channel. Okay. Amber keeps saying she doesn't give a crap. She doesn't give a crap when she's talking to Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew's sitting here being very respectful. And she's just, you're taking out your aggression on him as if it's him who made you lose your kids when it was yourself. I told you, you should be mad at yourself. Anyway, Dr. Drew asks her about James and she tells him how wonderful and awesome he is. Amber goes on to say it was great because she got to spend time with him. And uh, because Nessa had asked, how was that? And Amber said it was great. Um, even though James ended up being torn from me uh, when we see each other. It's great, though. So we're here with Gary, and he's saying how the entire family was upset, how James obviously is a part of the family. He's a little brother, and they were surprised by the verdict. So Dr. Drew asks, how did Leah deal with the situation? And Gary says that she was pretty upset, but in the end, this situation brought Leah and Amber closer. So Nessa asks Amber if she's okay. Of course she's not okay, all right? I'm getting a little tired of you and your dumb questions, Nessa. So I'm glad this review is almost over. But anyway, Amber says she doesn't she doesn't like talking about this stuff right now. So Amber says that right now she's very annoyed and depressed. That's why you guys can sense that I am. And she's just really annoyed at the situation. So Dr. Drew says, I can also see the anger behind your eyes periodically. What do you do with that? Amber says there's something inside of her that says it doesn't even matter if you're angry. Exactly. Because your anger is not going to change the situation. You just have to accept it as hard as it is. I know it's still fresh, probably. And so as time goes on, it'll get easier, hopefully. Yeah, it's not easy to lose a child. I don't know what it's like to lose a child, thank God. But hopefully it'll get to the place where, you know, she's able to deal constructively with that anger because we all know what happens when amber has anger and she doesn't handle it constructively so nessa said she asked gary how did you feel seeing the house the way it was left and gary said it wasn't about how it looked it's about how it smelled and it smelled like stale piss and nessa are you really asking him why i'm ready to end this okay i've been going on long enough i think this is going to be the longest freaking review i ever do and i'm really sorry guys okay this is why it took me so long to post this up but i did post it on wednesday okay but i'm just saying gary said he didn't think it was any place for a child to be in 
So Dr. Drew asks Amber, you've been very open about your mental illness. Have you talked to Leah about that? Amber says she does now. So Dr. Drew says, what do you tell her? And Amber says, I just tell her pretty much everything that I'm dealing with now. And she's still making uh, in and out trips with Leah because she says, she goes on to say that she says to Leah, this is why you haven't seen me last week or this is what's going on. And with that, we've reached the end of the team mom, the next chapter reunion. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this recap and review. I'm really sorry. It's probably probably going to win a Guinness Book of World Records for the longest freaking recap and review on Team Mom ever done in the year 2022. And I'm really sorry, but I had to get every little tidbit in there. Next video is actually going to be RHOP, Real Housewives of Potomac. We're going to start on episode two from the beginning. We're going to rewatch it and we're going to get into it and discuss it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.